presentation before the mid-afternoon break is Ivica Stipovic. Thank you, Ivica. Thank you. Okay, first of all, thanks for your time. Um, it's nice to see people again uh, gathering live and, and exchanging information and not watching them through, through the display. So um, I guess after the two years of pandemic, it's you know something that we all wished for. Anyway, enough the um, small talk. Let's see what's, what's on the menu today. Uh, we're going to be talking about abusing ICMP uh, version 6 to manipulate the network traffic. So, my name is Ivica Stipovic. Here's the email address that you can query for whatever questions you might have. And then there's also a blog that I write from time to time when I come across, um, well, interesting thing um, from, from the area of cybersecurity. Um, this particular topic hasn't been published yet. Um, I wanted to share this first with you guys and then um, publish it hopefully if it's any worth. Um, a little bit about the agenda. First, um, we're going to just shortly explain what the ICMP is. Now I know a lot of people um, probably know very well, but um, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, those who are not familiar with the protocol understand the basics so that we're on the same page and they can, you know, follow the, the, the presentation. Then we're going to take um, a little deeper dive into the ICMP and um, explain what the ICMP messages are, how, how they operate and how we use and misuse them. Then I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the description of the two attacks that were in the scope of this presentation. One actually deals with the uh, root injection. The other one is traffic direction. Um, they're both facilitated by um, abusing the ICMP messages. So, you know, just to eliminate any confusion, um, they are both in the scope of um, ICMP manipulation. Then we're going to identify the root cause. So essentially, we will be identifying the setups and the parameters of your operating systems that allow or disallow this, um, this attack from happening. Um, and then I'm going to show you the communication with vendor. The reason for that is um, after this number of experiments that I did and after realizing the behavior of the systems, I wasn't quite sure whether the systems were designed to work that way or maybe it was about flaw in the design and maybe they were supposed to behave a bit differently. <clears throat> and then at the end, in the summary, I'm going to give you the recommendations and, and suggestions how you may prevent those attacks from happening. So let's start with the ICMP, what it is. It stands for the Internet Control Message Protocol. Now, I deliberately emphasize this control part because um, that means that, that the protocol um, is able to diagnose various conditions that happen in the network. Sometimes it's able to mitigate it um, automatically. Sometimes they, it, it just provides you the kind of an error message that may indicate the, the root cause issue. For example, um, routing loops or packets not being forwarded to their um, desired destination is definitely one, one of the groups of, of, of the difficulties you might have. I'm sure many of you know destination host unreachable, destination net or port unreachable, and so on and so forth. So this particular message is actually processed and the result of, of one of the um, ICMP messages that are specially designed to deal with those defects. Another, um, maybe less known, is when packets are being too big to pass through the routing devices. Um, so this command just simulates it. Um, um, so it, it says packets need to be fragmented but the don't fragment uh, flag was set. So that, in other words, means 
I constructed deliberately a packet with excessive size that the network wasn't able to transmit, and I explicitly said I don't want packets to be fragmented. So the device saw the packet, which was excessive, and said, hey, I need to fragment it, but you, you disable this fragmentation, so I'm, there's nothing I can do with it. Um, and then the next group um, of, of issues is when the network is congested. This, um, this particular um, issue when the network is congested is um, one of the is part of, the, of one of the attacks that, that I'm going to present. So, um, long story short, the purpose of the ICMP is um, network error reporting, whatever, or for the number of conditions that happen in the network where your traffic may not flow um, as expected, it will make sure to notify you what's going on. So what's the basic assumption of the um, ICMP abuse? Um, I want to make kind of an introduction before we dive um, deeper into the ICMP abuse. Um, so the, the difference uh, between the upper and the lower part of the slide or the protocols is um, no protocol inherent authentication. So we have examples where you can perform various attacks and where protocols operate, um, yeah, regularly, and they do not impose any type of authentication. For example, our poisoning, right? So address resolution protocol that maps your IP address against uh, the hardware address. You can inject poison, change the, the entries in, in, in that um, table without any authentication. SNM, SMTP abuse, simple mail transfer protocol, is exactly um, the same. So you, you probably know that um, you can connect directly to the SMTP port and then uh, you would be able to use various commands. Like in early days, you, you, would, you could verify the, uh, whether the email address is valid or not for the SMTP. You can even compose and send those emails, and all that without the authentication. Um, then DHCP IP allocation, the same thing. You have DHCP client on your laptop, you connect to your network, you get the IP address, all good. The problem is there is no inherent authentication in this protocol. So this, that means, in other words, that you may inject arbitrary payload into the DHCP packets. So, you know, you might wonder, so what? Well, in one of the presentation I, I had last year, I actually demonstrated the capability that if your network is configured to allow allocation of IP addresses only to a certain type of devices, for example, your Windows clients that are equipped with the digitally signed certificate issued by your company, right? So it checks whether this is okay. If not, then um, you're, you're not getting the IP address. So what, what was possible to do was to construct the payload for DHCP request such that it masqueraded the identity of the client. So for example, I had the script running on the Linux and then I injected the signature of a Windows client or HP, LaserJet printer or Cisco AP um, uh, access point, and then I was able to actually um, disguise as, as a different type of client. Um, BGP routing protocol, the same. It has no inherent authentication. Now, there is M MD5-based authentication option, but it's not the inherent feature of the protocol of the application layer. It's imposed by the lower uh, layers of OSI model. So the first group are some of the examples um, of the protocols that do not use authentication. Hence, their exploitation is kind of easier than the second group. So the second group is .1x, POP3, HTTPS, um, SSH, Telnet, FTP. All of those protocols require some form of authentication, like .1x 
again, maybe for those not familiar with, with the acronym, is the protocol that will verify the identity of your client, not only identity, some other features too, before it's allowed to access the network. So the idea is someone comes with the rogue laptop, plugs it in into your uh, corporate network, and he gets the IP address and can do whatever he wants. No, dot one X will make sure, okay, there is a um, specific type of the device, there is a um, digital certificate issued by your company and so on. POP3 um, is the protocol that downloads messages from the, <clears throat> uh, into your inbox, your email messages into your inbox. And again, it, it requires authentication to identify the owner of the inbox. HTTPS, I'm not wasting <laughs> my words on that, you all know, e-banking, shopping, all those sites require some kind of authentication. Again, SSH, Telnet, FTP, you know, even the old ones, ancient ones like Telnet and FTP still um, require authentication. So, having understood that, um, let's just briefly outline the difference or the similarities between ICMP version 6 and version 4 message types. Um, maybe it wasn't clear. V4 and V6 refers to the IP addresses, like IP version 4 and IP version 6. Um, but essentially, if we abstract some low-level technical details, um, ICMP version 4 and, and 6 are the same or very similar in terms of their common functionality. So the both protocols must be able to handle um, certain conditions that, that occur in the network and give you a proper error message. So um, let's see what ICMP v6 message types are. Um, briefly said, ICMP message types are specific messages that are designated to deal with um, specific condition in the network. So there's a long list, right? It's, it's not exhaustive. You can, you can have a look at, at its complete description uh, into this URL. Uh, the two that we will be talking about today are the router advertisement and redirect messages. But you will uh, recognize some others that are well known like echo request, echo reply, packet too big, time exceeded, and so on. So each one of these is able to manage specific condition. So let's see now the difference between legitimate um, and uh, legitimate use and abuse of the protocols. Legitimate use is when your network device or devices announce issue with the network congestion and require that the network traffic is routed via um, alternative IP address. Now that obviously is legitimate IP address, your router, whatever. The abuse happens when the attacker inserts the rogue device that constructs the network redirect packets via the attacker's device. Now, this is a bit complicated, so let me just clarify this last sentence. So rogue device is the attacker's device that he possesses and inserts somewhere into the network. Um, constructs, what does it mean constructs? That means that we are building the packet from the scratch. That means we are using the tools that allow us to change each single header of the packet, thus allowing us to you know, change its parameters according to our needs. And then finally, the result of those packets will be redirection of the traffic via the attacker's device. So the typical scenario looks like this. So the client wants to load google.com. It sends its packet to a default gateway, which normally forwards the packets to the internet and loads the, loads the um, desired site. However, in a legitimate case, um, of a network problem, the default gateway responds with, well, you know what, I cannot tra um, process your traffic, please use the alternative gateway. And then via ICMP message that instructs the, uh, the user to 
redirect the traffic, um, the, the um, network stack will do that automatically and send the packets via, via alternative gateway. Now, um, the two attacks that we are going to talk about is our ICMP redirect and router discovery protocol. I'm, I'm not talking about any kinds of floods or, or denial of service. So, <clears throat> the ICMP redirect is the, when the gateway is no longer uh, the best route, so it, it sends a message telling, you know what, use the alternative um, route or the alternative IP address. Now, when abusing this another gateway, this alternative route is actually attacker's control device. So, to make it more graphical, you have the router on the upper um, right corner who, that injects um, the payload, the, the, the ICMP redirect message into the victim, and as a result, victim redirects all of its traffic through the attacker's control device. Now, in this case, you see the router and the laptop being two separate devices. This is not the restriction or the requirement of the attack. You can have one device serving both roles. So the example would be you, you deploy Linux with your attacking scripts that inject the traffic and you run some kind of network monitor to, to capture the traffic. Uh, the other attack, router discovery or advertisement message is very straightforward. That essentially means that the attacker will inject the root specific route into the victim's uh, local routing table. So, the design of the attacks. The first one is the, well, easier one to, to understand. The attacker will simply inject the arbitrary IPv6 route, I, I called it that beef just because it's simple to remember and, and to, to notice in, in various artifacts. So this route gets injected into the victim host, and now the victim host can actually um, reach the, the desired uh, route or the desired IP addresses via the attacker. So um, let's see a little bit uh, of the mechanics of, of the attack. So on the right-hand side, you have actually the packet that causes this injection. So. Um, it's the router advertisement. That's a specific um, ICMP message type. You can see it in other rectangle that it has its ID 134. So it's one of those ICMP messages we were talking about. And then uh, at the bottom of the right-hand side, you see the prefix. That's actually the payload that is contained in the router advertisement. This essentially says, hey, you know what? Inject the root for that beef. And that's it. On the left-hand side, you simply inspect the local routing table of the, of the Linux host, and you will see this root gets happily injected. And it says the dead beef is re reachable via the IPv6 address of your um, attacking, of your right-hand side um, attacking device. Um, I'm not going to bother you a lot with, with, with the theory around the, the packet structure. I'm just going to say this. We are using this ICMP v6 options, the, the lower part of the packet that actually specifies our payload. So it's this one here, this prefix. You see it belongs to the ICMP v6 option paragraph. Um, the, the rest of the explanations about the packet you can find here, but we're not going into this. <clears throat> now, um, let me clarify this kind of ugly construct, um, kind of cryptic stuff. So it, it, it's a construct that, that um, was made in, in SCAPI. Um, so SCAPI is a network library that, um, that is used in conjunction with Python, and it's one of its features is the capability to construct the packet from the scratch. That means you can change and alter every single part of the packet, including layer three, layer two, headers, and, and, and so on. So what, what this means is we're generating the ICMPv6, we know that, and this stands for network discovery. It's, it's a subset of, of, um, of the functionality, 
and that um, RA is router advertisement. And then the next payload is root info. Root info is a specific message type in the router advertisement that does our injection. And you see the, the prefix, which is, um, which is um, our root that we inject. So the examples were tried with various um, operating systems, so I was just experimenting to see if, um, if the vulnerability is actually applicable to all of them. Um, this is again the, the same attack, but a different variation. So I, I, you know, I, ch I changed the prefix and, and I launched the attack against Windows this time. Um, I think this one shows the, the Windows 2019. So again, the same thing. Um, you see the, the root being injected into, into the local table. So um, with, with the same payload, so essentially we can confirm at this stage that both Linux and, and Windows servers are um, vulnerable to the same um, attack or the, 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 the same concept. So why or what, what is exactly the, the root cause um, on Windows? There is this feature called router discovery. Um, it's, it's one of the attributes um, assigned to, to the interface and by default it's enabled. Root cause on Linux is essentially the same. It, it's just labeled differently. Um, we will be explaining those parameters a little bit later when I'm gonna talk about what you can do to, to prevent the attacks. But essentially those um, maybe not very intuitive underline RA stands for router advertisement. And as you might imagine or as you might know, one would be, um, would be representing the, the feature that's enabled, whereas zero would show that the same feature is disabled. Okay, so I'm just going to explain the, the, the two combined attacks and, and their logic. So um, bear with me with this one. It, it looks ugly, but, but it, it's actually not. So the right-hand side is the attacker side. The left-hand side is victim server. So in my concrete example, I had this um, router on the upper uh, right corner, um, which was mimicked by Kali. Kali is a Linux platform for, designed for pen testers. So, but, but you could actually do the same with, with any other Linux or even Windows. Um, and the Windows 10 is a different device, but as I said in the beginning, uh, you can perform the same attacks by having both router and, and uh, this device at the end uh, being the same device. So, we start by um, Kali injecting the dead beef root into the windows or any other things th th that I tried. And then essentially the result is if, if you ping or try to access anything um, uh, in, the, in the dead beef um, root range, the, the request would be simply forwarded to your attacking device that injected the root. So that, that essentially concludes the first attack. Now the second phase, um, I superimposed another script that injects the ICMP redirect packets into the victim. So what this will do is it will tell the victim, you know what, when you're sending traffic to your dead beef stuff, you're no longer sending it to your um, Kali device or, or let's say legitimate device that, that you would in normal circumstances have, but rather you will redirect the whole traffic through the attacker, in this case, Windows 10 client. As a result of that, any traffic that's initiated um, on the victim server, be it FTP, web, H, SSH, ping, will actually be redirected um, through the attacker's device. Now, obviously the choice of what you're going to do with scenario is yours, like you can simply inspect the traffic and, and 
capture potentially sensitive data, or you may alter the traffic, and um, you can simply, you know, put it into the dev null and, and cause the denial of service. Um, the, the one kind of dangerous scenario is where you have configured attacker device to forward this traffic even further to the legitimate device, so the, the user, the victim doesn't have a feeling that anything is wrong, but then you're tunneling all the traffic through your device and do wi wi with it whatever you want. So um, again, uh, just a little bit of, of lower details around ICMP redirect. Essentially, we choose or de define the IPv6 address that we want to use um, as, as our attacker's device. And we define that in the TGT, which stands for target, essentially telling the traffic, you know what, all the traffic destined for destination should actually be uh, redirected to, to the target. So again, uh, just to um, outline the setup, Windows 10 is the tar target in our case. Um, and destination is um, the, the, the traffic destined for dead beef is, is redirected through, um, through the attacker. Now this slide just shows you the, the structure of the packet. Again, um, the important thing is you see the, the type of the message which is redirect. You, are, you also see that that type has that specific ID. And uh, the two um, important parameters that we are using, actually abusing, are the target address, which represents our device um, that's intercepting the traffic, um, and the destination address that is actually the um, aimed legitimate destination. Again, um, not going too deep into the, the structure here. Um, so you recognize the target and destination address. These are the two fields that I was using. That was enough to, um, to complete those attacks. Uh, there are some other options in, in, in the lower ICMP v6 options um, layer, but um, I did not touch this at all. So if you want to find out more uh, about specific features or specific attributes of, of the packets that you might want to uh, misuse, um, I recommend you loading the RFC. Um, it, it's a pretty long document, but on the other hand, you get very nice and clear explanation of what exactly the target address is, what is the destination address. I know from my own experience, like, I couldn't figure out the difference when I first read that, you know, like target destination is the same. Well, it's not. And then um, each message with, with specific type is, is described, so um, I, you know, highly recommend that stuff if you want to dig in deeper. Um, this one is actually the complete reconstruction um, of the attack. So among all those entries, only the, the, the red ones are important. So um, the, the, the thing, as we mentioned, started by sending, uh, by injecting the root into the, into the victim on the left-hand side. So when the victim sends ping in this example, ping to this um, specific route that was injected, it gets redirected to the Kali, which imitates our um, legitimate router. So what, what, what Kali does is it, it will send the messages to um, cause redirection of the traffic through the IP address of our choice, which is our Windows 10 attacker's machine. And then as a result, any further traffic that's initiated from the victim will no longer go to the original um, destination of the dead beef, but it will rather be redirected to our Windows 10 attacking stuff. So you'll see here the, the initial SYN packet of the connection of, of the FTP, so it's, it's port 21, right? Th that was initiated by, by the victim that ended up on Windows 10, so this, this um, network um, capture is running on our Windows 10. And after 
trying to make sense of, of, of that behavior, um, I wasn't sure at this point if, you know, things are really meant to, to work this way. Because on one hand, I understand, you know, this is the legitimate capability of the protocol. So the protocol um, and, and the hosts that are processing those messages must be able to respond to, you know, changing conditions in the network. On the other hand, you know, it's, it's pretty trivial to, to kind of abuse it. You, you just construct the packet, you have no authentication, you send the packet and it gets injected and, and processed by, it, by, by, the, by the destination operating system. So um, I contacted Microsoft to see, you know, what, what's, what's their view. And um, as you can see, they, they said, look, it's, uh, it's, there's no flaw, it's, it's a legitimate design. So on one hand, you know, I, I understand this response, it, it makes sense. On the other hand, it, it still leaves us with a relatively large uh, attacking surface um, against the operating systems that, that, that have that enabled. So um, the summary is actually about the, the suggestions that I can give you how you can uh, mitigate those attacks. Um, we identified the root cause um, that um, the default setting allows the acceptance of the, of the redirect messages and of the router advertising messages as well. Um, so one obvious mitigation is disable ICMP redirect messages. Um, there are kernel parameters in both operating systems how you can do that. So I'm giving you the information about IPv4, even though IPv4 wasn't in the scope. But, you know, just to kind of outline the, the similarities, how you will mitigate that. So you will essentially change those parameters and you will reset them to zero, meaning that the operating system won't um, uh, accept those. In Windows, it's essentially the same. It's just the, the, the different way um, how you do it. Uh, there is alternative. If you, for whatever reason, have no um, possibility or, or, or access um, to the operating systems to block that, you can use your um, firewalls, intrusion detection, or other networking devices to block that. Um, so it's, it's most likely that uh, you will only need ICMP um, echo and reply because from my experience, from in most of the cases when you ask people, you know, why do you allow ICMP, the people will respond, well, we need it for diagnostic purposes to see if, if hosts are alive. So you, you then ask the question, like, you mean ping, echo, reply? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. But do you need to, like, detect if, if the packets are excessive in size or something like that? No, 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 no. So if your business case scenario is that you require ICMP only to, to check whether hosts are alive, fair enough, but allow only ICMP echo and reply. ICMP is far more than, than just those two messages. So I just did a quick checks with, with Cisco and Junipers with their um, recent OSs, and uh, they both have this feature enabled. So that brings us to actually con to conclusion that there are a number of networking devices with enabled um, redirected redirection features, but you also have a number of operating systems that enable that. So you end up with, you know, a huge pile of devices that um, enable that, which kind of extends the attacking surface and the probability that someone can um, abuse that. Um, the the yeah, the question is, you know, what, what, wh whether you need this um, capability with, with your OSs. Um, if you're using the routing engine capabilities of the operating system, then probably you need that. But in most cases I've seen in, in real life, they, they don't require that. So you should be okay with, with only um, ICMP's echo and, and, and reply. That actually um, brings me 
to the end of the presentation. Thanks for your time. I hope you didn't get to sleep. Um, you didn't fall asleep, sorry. Um, any questions? Do we have any questions for, yep, I see one. You may have partly already answered this question, but the really obvious question is, why are this feature enabled by default? Um, it's, it's a good question. Um, I presume the reason why they have ICMP redirect enabled is, this is the legitimate feature of legitimate um, routing devices, right? So router can in any time say, you know, I'm, I'm congested, you need to forward the traffic via alternative gateway. And then if you, your operating systems are not able to process that message, they will, you know, keep pushing packets into the wrong path. Now, in my humble opinion, right, that, and I emphasize that, in my humble opinion, this, this scenario is a little bit obsolete because, honestly, I haven't seen a business scenario where where this network redirect would, had, would have any legitimate purpose. These days you have high availability gateways, you have all kinds of load balancers, alternative paths, routing protocols able to deal with multiple routes. So, you know, if one gateway doesn't work, you know, the other node of the same routing device will overtake, will choose an alternative path and so on. So, again, in my humble opinion, I think this is not really a frequent scenario, and I would, I would think those features should be disabled by default. But anyway, the, the interesting stuff was that uh, Linux providers and, and, and Microsoft had the same idea that it should be enabled, so there must be a good reason for that. I just kind of don't, don't get it. <laughs> totally agree with you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, that uh, looks like it. If it's up, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, that completes the afternoon or mid-afternoon session, so it's now uh, break time, I believe. We'll recommence just after 15.50. Okay, thanks.